So let's talk uh, about what we should be telling our patients because ocular supplements are clearly one of the most important things you can tell your macular degeneration patients. But there is confusion. So let's think about what they go through on the day of their diagnosis. They come into our office, they get all these tests done, and then they get the diagnosis of macular degeneration. They're overwhelmed. They're scared. They know people who have gone blind from this disease. There's usually family members inside the room with them, and they're concerned about what their role is. There's questions about safety of vitamins. We know that this link with zinc and other items and beta carotene and smokers. And of course, there's compliance. One study showed that after one year, 40% of people stopped taking their macular degeneration. And this is really where our role comes in. There is reason for confusion, and this is why you should be specific with your patients. I went to a local CVS pharmacy and I took a photograph of the, the shelf that we send our patients to. And let's remember, these patients are usually older. They're not as sophisticated in all cases and understand what we told them. And so when you go to the CVS store shelf, you see one entire shelf of just lutein products by itself. And what's interesting is we talked that lutein probably is just not that effective uh, without zeaxanthin. And then we have some of uh, the other products. Bausch & Lomb has two lines of eye vitamins. One is the Preservision line and one is their Occuvite line. There's an eye science product, which we'll talk about here uh, in a bit. And then there's Alcon's products, which are eye caps, and they have, you can see, one, two, three, four down at the bottom shelf. And then there's a couple uh, generic brands as well. So clearly there is a reason for confusion uh, by just sending our patients to the shelf without proper instructions. But what I found was interesting uh, is actually going and looking at what's in these products. And I think you're going to all be surprised at what I found out. So Occuvite, which most patients will come in and tell you, I'm on Occuvite or on Preservision, but we need more information than that. I started telling my patients to bring me in the box, and the reason is because of a product like this. This is Occuvite's product called 50 Plus. I'm not entirely sure what the idea was uh, in this product, but as you can see, it has vitamin C, it has some vitamin E, it has a little zinc, and the level of vitamin C is, is very low. It's not a reds quality. It's uh, I think 150 milligrams, and whereas AREDS is 150. It only has one-tenth of the vitamin E as AREDS. It only has about nine milligrams of zinc, which is probably too low. Uh, and then it says lutein, six milligrams, but there's no zeaxanthin with it. And then it has a little omega-3. I'm not quite sure what this formula came from or where they had the science behind this formula, but this is the company that essentially owned the patent for AREDS and that changed uh, this product. And, and this is probably a cheaper product on the store shelf and may lead to confusion at the store shelf. Then we have a product called Occuvite with lutein. And lutein is a buzzword out there. So they think that they're getting the right product. Um, once again, vitamin C, very low. One-tenth of AREDS. Vitamin E, again, very low. Zinc, 15 milligrams, just not enough. And again, lutein by itself. So these two Occuvite products by themselves really are not even AREDS based products if you believe in the science of AREDS and you still want to do AREDS. AREDS or Bausch & Lomb does have an AREDS line in their preservation and if you want you know, AREDS, AREDS is great. But remember once again this contains vitamin A. Vitamin A is not effective in the eye in a pill form and it doesn't have the lutein or the zeaxanthin and it has the high level of zinc. And then there is a preservation with lutein. And so this probably sells well because the patients go there and they see preservation and they say lutein. But once again, vitamin C, so here's my problem with this product. It says serving size one soft gel. The vitamin C is half of AREDS. The vitamin E is half of AREDS at 200 international units. The zinc, it's lower, so I'm okay with that. But then it has lutein, five milligrams. Once again, not nearly enough, and lutein by itself, not effective without zeaxanthin. So that's my review of the Bausch & Lomb products. Uh, I'm, not, I'm a little frustrated that they had so many in their product line and that they chose to come up with formulas on their own outside of AREDS. ICAPS. ICAPS is another area of confusion. Uh, ICAPS does have an AREDS product, and it's strict to AREDS. If you believe, again, in AREDS, remember it has vitamin A, probably too much vitamin uh, or too much zinc. ICAPS does have a product with lutein and zeaxanthin. And I'll tell you what's interesting about this product. So... If you're a doctor who says, well, go out and get a product with lutein and zeaxanthin, this is the only one on the shelf outside of eye science that has lutein and zeaxanthin. But the problem is, when you look at the bottom of the label, it says lutein slash zeaxanthin. 
and it only says four milligrams. It doesn't tell you the amount of zeaxanthin. And my guess is that zeaxanthin really is an expensive product, and we know that in the production of lutein, some zeaxanthin is made. So this is probably just a fractional amount. But once again, not a great product. And then there's an ICAPS multivitamin formulation, which isn't bad, but really doesn't have the things that you need uh, for eye health. It doesn't have the proper ratio of lutein to zeaxanthin. Let's talk about iScience. iScience is a new product that came out on the market uh, last year. And this is a product that I really think has it all together. Um, let's look at their formula. Vitamin C, 500 milligrams. That is A-reds. Vitamin E is 400 milligrams. That is A-red. Uh, it does have vitamin B6 which and folate, which we talked about, show, was shown in that study in February of 2009, to be preventative for macular degeneration. It has selenium. It has lutein and zeaxanthine in the proper ratio. 10 milligrams of lutein to 2 milligrams of zeaxanthin, 5 to 1. It is the only product right now on the mass market shelf, on the CVS shelf, that has this ratio that's so important. It also has omega-3 in there. It has bilberry. It has alpha lipoic acid. It has grapeseed extract, L-glutathione. So I think if you, you have the kitchen sink approach and you have, want everything that you need, iScience is a great formulation. In addition, I think iScience is great for those who don't have macular degeneration and are looking for a protective effect. Uh, this may be the right product for them. Or if you just want to be proactive in the early stages, great product. Uh, it's a product that I really feel is safer than anything else on the shelf right now. So as physicians, our job is, one, not only to point out the, the, the medicine or the product that can slow down the progression of this disease, but we have to improve compliance. If I said that there was a pill that would keep you from having a heart attack and you had a one in four chance of preventing a heart attack, 25% chance, you'd take it. And if I told you that pill was over the counter, you'd take it. Well, that's essentially what we have here. We have science that says that if you take an AREDS-based formula or an AREDS-2 based formula, you have a one in four chance of slowing down the progression of this disease. Pretty important. This is where our doctor's role is. We should be sampling the patients with the product we want. We should be naming products by name. Because if you just say, go to the store shelf, get an eye vitamin, they're all the same, look for only AREDS, you're missing the boat because AREDS doesn't have lutein and zeaxanthine. Also, it's helpful when products are accessible to patients. You know, some of these patients are elderly, they don't go to the store a lot. I think it's helpful when sometimes products are sold in your office. Uh, but if they're only sold in your office, it's probably not as helpful as being sold in the office and in the store. I always reassure the patients that, one, they can make a difference. Let them be proactive. Let them know that they control their destiny. And the one next uh, note is cost. You know, vitamins are expensive, and this is something that's not covered by insurance. And so patients have a tough, tough time. They think because it's not covered by insurance and it's not prescription, then maybe it's not as important as some of their other medicines which come from the pharmacist. You need to explain to them this would cost a lot more if it was uh, uh, over the, uh, if it was prescription, and this is something that they just need to bite the bullet and hopefully pay for to save their vision. And then lastly, as we know that healthcare is changing, uh, there is a medical legal um, position here. You know, I think it is probably going to be considered malpractice if you don't mention in your notes or if you don't document that you told your patients about eye vitamins. The future is coming where it's paid for performance. This is something that Medicare is starting to do where we have to tell diabetics that they have to control their blood sugar. We have to tell our AMD patients that they have to put a use AREDs and it has to be on the chart once a year, at least in my field. So this is coming down the pipeline. When I was on faculty at Will's Eye, we did a survey looking at patient compliance and how to get them to better uh, take their vitamins. And one of the things that we looked at was place of purchase. Do you buy them from the doctor's office? Do you get them at the internet? What would be the ideal situation? Direct purchase from your doctor's office? Where do they get follow-up purchases? What if it was internet only and what if it was doctor's office only? And what was interesting in the study is that uh, it showed that the best compliance came if the product was sold in the doctor's office and it was sold in retail. And this is really the model that iScience has followed. You can buy the product direct from the doctor, which gets you instant compliance immediately. Uh, it also re uh, enforces follow-up visits. It can be a revenue stream to the doctor involved, and it brings patients back to your office. But having the direct retail outlet 
also gives the product credibility and it makes it easy for patients. I mean, clearly patients aren't coming to our office, offices every single month uh, for follow-up visits and dry macular degeneration. So if it's only sold out of your office, it may limit the amount they, could ta they can take or they'll have to buy three or four bottles to get them through, which brings into cost. So interesting, uh, the direct-to-doctor and the direct-to-retail combined was the most effective model we found in improving patient compliance in our Will's Eye survey. So in conclusion, macular degeneration is clearly an epidemic and it's on the rise. The people that we should be really concerning about ourselves about are the 7.3 million in the early stages. This is where we have the most impact. It's where the role of pre uh, prevention is important, uh, vitamins like eye science and the, the ingredients that are preventative. Um, 3.6 million have bilateral large drews, and these are the uh, people who know they have macular degeneration and need improved compliance. Be specific with the vitamins that you want them to use. The 20 to 25, uh, 25 to 30 percent of ha uh, family members that have the hereditary form, we should be talking to them about eye vitamins, uh, the right choices, get their children on it if they're over the age of 45. We should all be talking to our patients about lifestyle modifications, quit smoking, watch your cholesterol, medications like statins, Crestor or Lipitor have, have a positive benefit on macular degeneration as well. And lastly, be proactive. Uh, we see patients all the time in our office who come in with a bleed in one eye and they've never heard of uh, macular degeneration, never have been told, have been seeing their eye doctor for years. I love it when my patients come in and they're already on an eye vitamin. It makes my conversation easier and uh, it helps with our relationship with our referring doctors. So you have nothing to lose. Start early as long as you choose the correct uh, vitamin. And then lastly, let's talk about healthcare versus disease care. You know, we call ourselves healthcare um, practitioners, but really we wait till diseases get too far along and we treat disease care. The future of healthcare is really catching people early. Prevention is going to be a bigger key. Um, and it's going to be where the focus of future healthcare dollars are. I thank you for your time and your interest in the subject, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.